understand that when we live with Christ in, with, and around us, that there is a similar change in all of us. We become very different people from other people in the world, 
And I'm going to read my sermon title. What is that smile? That gentleness? That joy? That peace? Where does that come from in our life? We live in a hectic world. If you have young children at home, you know how busy every day is. If you're employed, you know how busy every day is. If you're retired, you know how busy every day is. It just takes a little longer to get a little less done. Um, but there is truly a metanoia, a change of heart and head, when we allow Christ to live in, with, and around us all of the time. And it doesn't mean those things happen because the world around us becomes perfect. It does not become perfect. But our joy, our peace, our gentleness, and our love are the product of the presence of Jesus Christ and the movement of God's Spirit in us, compelling us forward, compelling us to live the kind of life that God would love all of us to live, to follow Christ's example. I suppose it means it's okay if we get angry once in a while. That's righteous anger is okay. It's just being generally angry that's not okay. And if you watch the, the news every day, you'll see circumstances where that general kind of anger about life and whether or not one treasures life is on the front of our TV sets every single time we watch a news broadcast. You know, now, not only have we found that we have way more children in, in our possession as a government, I'm being very careful not to say what I really think, who have come across the border, some accompanied, some unaccompanied. And they're being retained in these facilities. We have one big one here in Tucson on South Oracle, um, right next to the low-cost housing tower that's there. Um, and they're all over the country. I mean, it's not just in the Southwest. or They're, they're all over. They're in the Northeast and in the Central States. And um, this is just a huge number of children. And then we find out this week that many of them have been abused by the people who have been hired to care for them. Um, the world is not a good place. It is not the kind of place where we can just think God's going to make everything good without our participation. We need to participate because God is the one who calls us through our living help people understand what being different really means when you have faith in God through Jesus Christ. And what being guided by the Spirit really means. We all have multiple choices all of the time in how we respond to any circumstance or any situation. We, we get to pick. The question is whether or not we'll allow God's Spirit and our baptism in Christ and our reception of the sacrament at the altar every week to transform our choice so that instead of choosing the way of the world and how things get done in the world, we might choose the way God wants things to be done, the way God created them to be, which was, and I know this goes back to Bethel Bible, but I really love it, for all of creation to be in harmony. Har Boy, there's a word we don't use unless we're singing in a four-part choir. <laughs> harmony. God created everything, all people, all of his creatures, the planet, the universe, to all operate in harmony, according to Scripture. How we live we are called to live in harmony with one another. With those we know closely and with those we hardly know at all. We're called to live with that harmony that God created at the very beginning. It was the loss of that harmony that drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. That brought sin into the rest of God's creation. 
It was the choice they made to take a different track and follow a different path than God had asked them to follow. Now you and I constantly get asked in Scripture and in sermons, which are, I hope, a reflection of Scripture, how to, we get asked that we should live a certain way in the world. And you know what? Just like you, I know I fall short. And it doesn't take long for me to leave Sunday worship to find myself in that place. Have a talk with my boys. <laughs> See if I ever get outraged and angry with them. Does that ever happen? Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> They're being kind. It happens between parents and their children all the time. Imagine if it happens between us and our children, and we are God's children, aren't we thrilled that God didn't respond and doesn't respond to us the way we respond to our children sometimes? Instead, God chose to offer a sacrifice on our behalf so that we could be in a right relationship with God, so that we might know we're forgiven, so that we might know that in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, that we too will share in that. And Scripture informs us of that reality in our lives as God's children. I suppose knowing the end should help us live in the middle. But I'm not sure that it always does. I'm going to say that again. Because we know our end, which is not an end at all, it is a move from this life to a new life, shouldn't that impact how we live in the middle, in our lives, as we move from day to day and place to place? I believe it should. I believe it should fill our lives with gentleness and joy and peace and that we should always have, if not on our face, a smile within us about the joy that belongs to us in God that has been shared with us through Christ, guided by the Spirit to be shared with other people around us. We sometimes see cranky old men. Sometimes I am it. I see this picture of a person who looks like a marionette with the drop corners of the mouth and the jaw just goes up and down. <laughs> and there's not a change in the features on that face ever because a marionette can't change their features. They're going to look the way they were made. Wouldn't it be nice if we looked the way we were made? We were made to be the people of God, the body of Christ, the church in the world. We were made to bear with us a message of God's grace and love for all people. We were meant to be gentle and kind and to bring transformation to the lives of people we know and even those we don't know by the grace that exudes from who we are as the baptized people of God. Do you know what brings people into a church? It's usually not asking them. It's usually showing them what it means to be the part of a Christian congregation. That our lives are different because of what we believe and what gifts we have been given in Jesus Christ. And when people witness that around us, it becomes a very different sense of what the church is about. You, you've all heard it. I don't want to go to church. The church is full of hypocrites. You bet it is. Every one of us is a hypocrite. None of us escape it. That's why we need to be in the church. We need to have that foundation rebuilt in our lives constantly. The foundation of Jesus Christ. The foundation of God's grace. The foundation of being guided by the Spirit every day 
and allowing the power of God's grace to live in, with, and around us all of the time. That gentleness and love and peace, that all comes from knowing God's love in Jesus Christ. From knowing that God's judgment has been transformed to God's forgiveness by the life, ministry, suffering, and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the picture scripture portrays for us. But if we read carefully Old Testament and New Testament, what we discover is God has always been a God of grace. Though we certainly see plenty of times when he got angry, or at least when the people who were being guided by Christ, by God to write scripture, told us that God was angry. And remember I said, righteous anger is okay. Not remembering to, to give thanks to God for his great glory, his power, and his might, and his love is always appropriate. Every single day, every, every time we pray, it's appropriate to do that. There's an article in the most recent Lutheran about prayer and how often we ask compared to how often we praise God. Guess what we do the most? Ask. ask. Yeah, we ask. The first step always ought to be giving praise to God. You know, it's our hymns today are more about praise to God than asking for God. It's acknowledging what God already has done in our lives. And the transfiguration shows that because you and I are moved to be different people when we do it with the light of Christ in our lives every day. Now that doesn't mean as we go into descending darkness in Lent that we have a right to be nasty. Because this, this Lenten season coming is a season of remembering how different our lives and the life of the world would be if God had chosen instead of sending grace and forgiveness and mercy in Jesus Christ had chosen to judge everyone. It happened once, according to Scripture. And God has chosen to never allow it to happen again, to never be in that place. It would be really nice if I could really make myself not respond in anger to my children. Because I expect them to be better, to be wiser, to know things that I'm pretty sure they know but won't act on in their living. I'm in the same place with God myself. All of us are. We know what God requires. He requires that we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior and allow our lives to be guided by the Spirit to bring his grace to all people, to be the shining light that is a beacon of hope for all people who come. The kids are going to be singing in the kid choir over the next few weeks some songs that talk about coming and how free it is to receive God's grace. How free it is to come and eat of the body and blood of, of Jesus Christ, which is the provision of God's grace for our lives. There is no requirement for payment. The requirement is actually thanksgiving. It's being ready and able to say, thank you, God, for this wonderful gift. That's the price that's before us. And that happens when we are moved by the Spirit. That thank you never comes from us, just like faith never comes just from us. It is an action of God in our lives by the presence of God's Spirit that we believe. And we need to always remember that. I remember these conversations at seminary. Well, isn't there some point down the road where I have something to do with this? And the answer is no. Because you cannot 
pay a price to earn God's grace. You cannot earn your way. You can only accept it with thanksgiving. And that's called justification by grace through faith, which is a whole study for multiple weeks out of Scripture. It is who we claim to be as Lutherans, that we are justified by God's gift of grace through God's gift of faith. Not by what we do, but all by what God does. And so we can smile, we can have peace and gentleness and joy in our living. And yes, sometimes it's necessary to turn to God and say, Oy vey. I suppose that's the best statement we can make to God. And the words in English aren't good. <laughs> uh, because there are those times. And I acknowledge that we all have those times. But it is God's grace that compels us forward to live as his children and to bring his light into a very dark and foreboding world. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen.